love team. We are John and Tara Thorman, your money coaches. And in this video, you are going to learn why Dave Ramsey is wrong about debt. Unless you're a baby. Oh my gosh, this is like uh, uncharted territory, right? Because everybody lauds Dave Ramsey for his uh, helping people get out of debt. And legitimately, he has helped people get out of debt. Yes. But his truth is not the truth for everybody. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's right, folks. No baby steps here. Okay. Instead, we're going to look at Dave Ramsey's dogmatic mm -hmm. position on debt as the tail side of a three-sided coin. coin. Okay. So you've been working really hard on this. Yeah. I'm pretty excited about it. And you're passionate about it. There's something that bothered you so much in wanting to do this video. Um, and what was that? You had to figure out why. Yeah, it was grinding me. Like it yeah. was across the grain. Like it just was not right. It wasn't sitting good in my soul, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know? And it's like, why do I have such a problem with um, Dave Ramsey's position yeah. on debt? I mean, I have problems with a lot of his positions and I have problems with how he, uh, I mean, I have just problems with a lot of it because I think he's very condescending. I think mm -hmm. he is belittling name calling and uh i i hate the name of his course the seven baby steps i mean i'm gonna grow i'm a grown man i don't do baby steps right Just so there's a whole lot of it that i don't like disrespectful but i didn't know i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't put my finger on it yeah exactly mm -hmm. that's what you were telling me and i'm trying to find out why do i have such a problem with this yeah and so i'm really glad that you dove into that to yeah. see it's important right okay, okay. so all right is that good uh-huh okay so back to no baby steps, right. okay? We are all grown adults here and we're gonna make adult, mm -hmm. responsible, mature decisions so that we can achieve our financial freedom That's faster right. so we can enjoy it longer, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And we, we talked about the three-sided coin. We got heads, we got tails, and then you've got the edge. That's right. And we want you to have an edge so that you can win your financial games, okay? So, so the tail is Dave Ramsey uh -huh. and his position on <clears throat> debt. The heads is going to be Robert Kiyosaki and his position right. on debt. And if you don't know Robert Kiyosaki, he wrote a book called Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right? right? And of course, it's only the number one best-selling personal finance book in the history of the world. So he has some credibility that we could pay attention mm -hmm. to, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we got heads, Kiyosaki, we got tails, Dave Ramsey, and we want to find our edge. Right. Right, because the edge, if you remember, is the position of truth and wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. because we see the whole right. picture. We get both sides. Yes. And then we can make a decision, applied wisdom, right, is knowing what to do and when to do it. Right. And so then we, once we got all the information, we can mm -hmm. make the wise financial decision. Right. That's okay. Good. Right. Oh, before we get any further, please crush <laughs> that like button and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because we want you to win your money game and achieve financial freedom faster so you can enjoy it longer. Very good. All yeah. right, now we're into physical fitness, mental fitness. Spiritual uh -huh. and financial. Right. Yeah. So when we do our physical fitness every morning, right now we're on the beach. Mm -hmm. uh, we are blessed, we are thankful. We are staying on the beach in Daytona Beach Shores for about four months. And uh, so every morning, weather permitting, mm -hmm. we are on the beach so walking. Far it's permitted it's permitted <laughs> so and i listen to audible i, I read books right through my ear hole uh -huh. i read books through my ear hole while i am walking and uh which is awesome i love that i get a twofer mm -hmm. right and the other day i heard this quote mm -hmm. and i absolutely loved it and it connects connects, mm -hmm. connects. and it connects to this three-sided coin concept yes. that we've been talking about a little bit right right so the quote is from famed American economist who has been called a uh, intellectual giant, okay? His name is Thomas Sowell, and he says this, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. And I heard that and I was like, say what? Mm -hmm. And uh, just let that digest and, and ferment in you or permeate your you know cells all through your body okay there are no solutions there are only trade-offs right. now this idea of trade-offs is one of the most important concepts when it comes to personal finance 
Yeah. Now, in economics, okay, we call it an opportunity cost, but we call it a trade-off. That means if you spend $100 on this one thing, you don't have that $100 to spend on anything else. Right. If you spend the $100 on this one thing, you don't have the $100 to buy financial peace of mind, mm -hmm. to buy your financial freedom in the future, right? Everything, there is a trade-off. Mm. And the problem that we have as American in this consumerism, you know, culture that we live in is we never think about it. Mm. We don't take a second, right, to think about what's the trade-off. Right. If I spend this money, what's the trade-off? It's because we're in the moment. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of times we're trying to self-medicate. Right, and we want the answer. We want the solution. We, we want, want the, the dopamine point. hit of buying something. Right. We want to feel good. We want the finite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? So let's consider the three-sided coin and the trade-offs, okay? Um, I see trade-offs as the third side of the coin. Right. Our position of truth and wisdom and, and understanding, okay? So <clears throat> let's dig right into this. So we've got Dave Ramsey on the tail side right in his position on debt uh guys it's dogmatic to mm -hmm. say the least now this is a philosophy right it's a belief system it's not truth based on his experience right which he tells people and encourages them to do it the same way every family are different yes yeah, not always the best idea for everyone in every exactly. situation right so. we got to be personal about this so right? his truth about debt is not the, the truth, truth. Right. Right. So let's talk about Dave's philosophy, this dogmatic approach to debt. He says debt always equals risk and it's always dumb. <laughs> and more debt means more risk. Yeah. Right. Now, I find this incredibly interesting. On the one hand, no debt because debt equals risk. But on the other hand, when you're talking about investing, he's all risk. Yeah. It's 100 percent equity mutual funds mm -hmm. all the time, mm -hmm. even in retirement, mm -hmm. when you can't afford to lose money. Right. It's max risk in investing, but no risk in debt. Mm. Very interesting to me. Mm. Uh, but anyways, I digress. Mm -hmm. So coming back, Ramsey does acknowledge that the calculator, he says the calculator will show you that debt as leverage will help you grow your money faster. You can acquire assets faster, but what it doesn't consider, what it, the calculator doesn't account for is the risk right. that you take on, right? So, but he says, so by paying cash for everything, you remove the risk. Well, I just think that's dumb. <laughs> you can't remove all the risk. I mean, waking up is a risk. Right. Right? Like all of life is a risk. And the idea is you learn how to manage those risks appropriately. Uh -huh. Right? You can't avoid the risk. Uh -huh. You can manage it uh, and do things to reduce the risk. But um, that's just, that's just uh, silly to me. To, because debt is a tool, although he will say it's not. Right. Okay? Debt is a tool. And it's not all or nothing. There's a graded scale here, in my opinion, okay? So, um, Dave's opinion and beliefs about debt, his philosophy, is largely the result of his own financial disaster as a, as a kid in his early 20s, okay? He was a in the real estate business. He was a real estate investor, okay? Mm -hmm. And he somehow sold a bank, a local bank, I guess, mm -hmm. on funding him yeah. to buy investment real estate. Yep, that's true. Now, here's the situation. So Dave Ramsey, I think he was 26 so when it blew up. Years ago. A long time ago. Mm -hmm. So he convinced a bank to provide 100% financing, right. which is the extreme of risk, right? I mean, he's got nothing down. And would that even happen? Could you even do that today? Yeah, there's times you can do that. Okay. But typically not a, a bank is going to do that unless right. you've got some real kind of personal connection or something. Right? Okay. Sorry. So 100% financing on investment real estate, but the debt instrument that was used 
was not traditional. There was no 30-year mortgages. There was no long-term loans. It was all 90-day callable notes. Mm -hmm. Okay? The riskiest, probably, of the risky kind of financing that you could ever imagine. And he knew that. Sure he did. Okay. Right? But that's what he did because he was able to get the properties. I think he was a fix and flipper. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, and he was making money. So that wasn't the issue, according to himself. But the problem came up is that the bank that he got all this 100% financing using 90-day callable notes, mm -hmm. the bank was bought out. Yeah. They acquired a bigger bank, a regional bank, or somebody, a bigger bank acquired the small bank, and then they took a look at it. Who has got this over a million dollar loan portfolio on 90-day callable notes? Oh my gosh, it's a 26-year-old kid. Call them. We're done. We're not having that risk. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, well. from that experience of going broke because they called the notes and he couldn't, you know, pay them all back, he's got this philosophy now that all debt is no good. Mm -hmm. And to validate or to reinforce his perspective and his truth, mm -hmm. right? He turned to the Bible, right? He, I believe he was a newer believer. convert and believer at that point. And he looked at the Bible and you'll hear him. He repeatedly refers to the second half of a verse out of Proverbs, mm -hmm. it's Proverbs 22 verse seven. The second half of that verse says, the borrower is a slave of the lender. Right. He omits the first half of the verse, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and later in the video, if you stick around, we're going to go over the uh, issue with Dave's uh, interpretation, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, there is a trade-off. <laughs> There's another side to that coin. And I think Dave has missed the boat on it, mm -hmm. okay? And we're going to talk about it later. But Ramsey claims debt is not a tool for building wealth. Hmm. Ridiculous, okay? He says... There are tons of so-called financial experts who want you to believe debt is a tool you can use to build wealth. Well, those folks are plain wrong. <laughs> That's what Ramsey says. Right. Now, I don't claim to be any kind of financial expert. Um, I am an enthusiast, for sure. Mm. I am a licensed advisor, right. and I've been doing it a long time, so I do know a thing or two. Yeah. But Ramsey goes on to say, your biggest wealth-building tool is actually your income. Hmm. But when you have to send huge chunks of your income out to cover your debt payments, right. you've, called, you've lost control of the tool. That's right. Okay. Well, it's not shocking to me anymore because a lot of stuff Dave Ramsey says is shockingly bad <laughs> and incorrect and dangerous for people to follow. But he categorically rejects and denies the legions of investors and business people who have, in fact gotten wealthy by using debt mm -hmm. to acquire more assets. I mean, it's intu you know he's wrong. It's intuitive, right? I mean, you just know it. The obvious truth is that debt is, in fact, a power tool mm -hmm. for building wealth. Mm -hmm. But it, because it's a power tool, you've got to learn how to use it properly and be responsible and careful because you could cut your arm off. Mm -hmm. You could cut your head off. It's a power tool. It's dangerous. But that doesn't remove or negate the fact that it is highly effective when used properly in the right circumstances. Right? right? Mm -hmm. So, I, Ramsey has this quote. He says, the only good debt is a paid off debt. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my gosh. Well, since uh, debt is bad, Ramsey believes your most powerful wealth building tool is your income. And he, here's another quote from him. He says, trying to save and invest while you're still in debt is like running a marathon with your feet chained together. That's done with a capital D. Get debt out of your life first, then you can start thinking about building wealth. Hmm. Well, that's a stupid analogy. It's not like that at all. Right? right? It's just not. Right. You're going through life in a rowboat. You're rowing backwards into the future. You got two oars. Maybe one of them is managing your debt and one of them is managing your assets. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, so Dave Ramsey's way is one way of looking at it. It's the tail side. Mm -hmm. but it's not the only way. Right. All right. So let's look at the head side. All right. Now, heads is the opposite view, which we can see from Robert Kiyosaki, right? Who is just so happens to be the author of the number one most popular mm -hmm. 
sold personal finance book in the history of the world. So the guy knows something, okay? Robert Kiyosaki's uh, position, his philosophy, mm -hmm. is completely opposite from Ramsey, and I love it. I love this example so much. Mm -hmm. Debt is money. Debt is his power tool mm -hmm. that he uses to purchase more assets. The more assets he have that produce more cash flow, the wealthier he gets. Mm -hmm. And by using debt, okay, to finance things it reduces the amount of taxes he has to pay so he gets a twofer okay he gets more cash flow and less taxes like that's the dream deal right there right oh this is funny too in the interview robert kiyosaki also said that dave ramsey was a idiot uh on his f position on debt <laughs> so we do have complete opposites here yes now this is this is unbelievable. So how much debt how much debt do you think would be a lot of debt to have? Oh man. A million. A million dollars. So if you had a million dollars in debt, you'd be going, I'm uncomfortable, this is a lot of debt. Yes. Now the thing is probably you gotta put that in context. Yes, you do. If you had a million dollars in debt, but you had two million dollars of assets, are you in debt? Right. Mm -mm. You're in equity of a million dollars, right? Right. You have a liability of a million dollars, right? But you have equity of a million dollars. Mm -hmm. So we got to put this thing in context, right. okay? Especially if your two million dollar asset is kicking off cash flow right. that pays for the million dollar debt plus a whole bunch more to, for you to live on, mm -hmm. right? The amount of debt doesn't matter. But here's what's interesting: Robert Kiyosaki, in a recent interview, said that he was one point two billion dollars in debt okay billion with wow. a b wow right and it was funny because he was he was grinning like he was smirking because he's proud of it right. he's proud that he's 1.2 billion dollars in debt Probably. because he's making bank and he's not paying taxes yeah it's so crazy now since debt is money to kiyosaki uh you want to keep your interest rates as low as possible right but you want to maintain the debt for as long as possible because mm -hmm. it's money, it's leverage. So he, you know, when interest rates were low, they got refinanced everything. So could you imagine having $1.2 million in debt at 3% interest? Imagine. Wow. Because right now you could drop your money in a high yield savings account and make 5%. So you're mm -hmm. making more than what it's costing you. Mm -hmm. Plus the debt, if you're a debtor, inflation is your friend. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, let's play this game using the third side of the coin, okay. the edge, because we want you to win your money game. So we got to play on the edge so we can see both sides of this situation, right? From the financial and the economic situation. Mm -hmm. Then we can figure out what's the best decision for you, because right. that's what matters, mm -hmm. right? Um, decisions that will give you the best trade-offs. Remember, there are no solutions, there are only trade-offs. So what you want to do is get the best trade-off for your situation. Mm -hmm. Okay. First, mm -hmm. it seems to me that we must decide what the heck is the goal here. Right. So let me ask you a question. Is your goal to become financially free and have control of your time, your money, your relationships, you know, your purpose in life, what you do? Or is your goal to get out of debt. Yeah. Because you can't focus on two things, so you gotta pick one, mm. right? You know what they say about rabbit hunting? Yeah. If you try to catch two rabbits at the same time, you'll catch none, <laughs> right? Okay. So what do you want most? Do you wanna get debt free or do you wanna be financially free? So you can only choose one. Free. Yeah. You wanna be financially free? I do. Me too. Even if I have a million dollars in debt, who cares if I got multiple millions of dollars in assets and mm -hmm. equity, right? Right. That has more than enough cash flow to pay for your lifestyle and service the debt. Right. Financial freedom, baby. That's where it's at, right? So instead of paying off your debts as quickly as possible, you might want to stay in debt as long as possible so that you can leverage that to buy more assets and keep increasing your cash flow. Right. Now, I know it might sound heretical to a lot of you, but it ain't. <laughs> it's not. Dave Ramsey says your greatest wealth building tool okay. is your income. Yeah. 
right? Mm -hmm. I disagree. I think your greatest wealth building tool is your ability to acquire more assets. Mm -hmm. So income is on the income statement. That's income and expenses. All right, assets are on the balance sheet. Okay, that's where your net worth is calculated, right? So don't conflate these. I wanna look at the balance sheet for a second, okay? So first of all, here's my formula for wealth. If you wanna acquire wealth, here's a formula. It is assets times freedom times fitness <laughs> to the power of G. Mm -hmm. And the power of G is God, right? right? the universe, right? Maybe luck, whatever you want to call it. I'm calling it God because he's looking out for us. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that he gives us the ability to create wealth. Right. Okay. You can look that one up. Mm -hmm. So the formula for wealth is assets times freedom times fitness to the power of G. Mm -hmm. So what are assets? You begin, okay, by investing your money in your number one asset, which is you. Mm -hmm. You're the number one asset. And what we're going to be investing in here is your mindset, your skill set, and your tool set. Right. Because mindset times skill set times tool set equals assets, and assets produce cash flow. Mm -hmm. And that's what we want on the balance sheet. We want to focus on accumulating our assets because that's the number one thing that produces cash flow. That's what gives us financial freedom. Ramsey's focused on the liability side and trying to eliminate debt at the expense of your assets. He will sacrifice your assets to eliminate debt. Which really just instills fear. It's a, mm. it's, it's a spirit of fear. I don't, I, that's what I think. Mm. It's do it this way out of fear. Mm. Okay. Huge. Now, if, <clears throat> if your assets are your ammunition, Mm -hmm. and you're in battle. Mm -hmm. If you surrender all your ammunition to mm -hmm. cease the battle, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. You're in trouble because mm -hmm. now you can't fight another battle because you got no ammo. Right. Like you're screwed. Right? Until mm -hmm. you can replenish. Right. And that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time to accumulate back your ammunition. So we got to look at the at the balance sheet. So let's do this. I'm going to pull this up and we're going to look at some at some balance sheets here, okay? So number one balance sheet, we're looking at liquid assets. We got $10,000 in a checking account that'll cover a, a, a month or so of expenses. We got 120,000 in a high yield savings account. We've got 25 grand in a retirement account. We got a $20,000 value on a vehicle, $500,000 market value on a home. So our total assets are 675,000. Now on the liability side of the balance sheet, we got a $10,000 credit card balance. <laughs> And then we go down, I got a $30,000 car loan. Like I'm upside down on the car, mm -hmm. right? I owe more than it's worth. $400,000 first mortgage and 50 grand on a student loan. So my total liabilities are 490,000. Mm -hmm. My total assets are 675. So you see below my net worth is $185,000. Okay. Okay. Now guys, this is really interesting. Okay. There's a term called dead equity. Your home value minus your home mortgage is your home equity. In this example, it's 100,000. That's debt equity because you can't use it for nothing. Okay. But your liquid equity is the, uh, the high yield savings because the checking account is to pay your current bills, right? You got mortgage, you got stuff to pay, you got to live. So I'm just using your liquid equity as your high yield savings account of 120,000. That's the fuel to acquire more assets. That's the ammo to put in your gun, right? To win the battle. Mm -hmm. um, now, what Ramsey would do is something like this. He would say, okay, keep some money in your high yield emergency fund, right? Keep some money there, but pay off that debt. Pay off that credit card, pay off that car loan, pay off that student loan, and then start you know, paying off that mortgage. So if we do something what he would suggest, okay? We take a hundred grand from the high yield savings account, so now I just have twenty thousand dollars of cash left. I just gave away almost all my ammunition, all my bullets. Mm -hmm. Okay. My asset value drops a hundred thousand. So I went from six seventy five to five seventy five because I took the hundred grand and I applied it to the other side. I put it on my liabilities. 
paid off the credit card, paid off the car loan, paid off the student loan, put 10 grand on my mortgage. So now my liabilities have dropped to 390. Notice my net worth is exactly the same. Paying off your debt does not improve your net worth. Mm -hmm. All it does is destroys your <laughs> assets. Right? Wow. Your your home equity, that debt equity in your home, okay, went up by 10,000 cuz we put it towards a mortgage. Well, that doesn't help you. Okay? Actually it increases your risk. And your liquid equity, the ammo, the stuff you can use to go buy more assets dropped to $20,000. Ugh. Guys, remember the objective here we talked about? The goal is not debt freedom. The goal is financial freedom, which means you got to acquire more assets and increase your cash flow. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Ramsey's plan does not do that, okay? It's focused on the wrong side of the balance sheet. It's focused on eliminating your liabilities at the expense of your assets. Yes, mm -hmm. I don't like that. Yeah. Now, here's another option. We could use a financial instrument called a HELOC, a home equity line mm -hmm. of credit. We could probably take $50,000 of that home equity that you have and put it into a high yield savings account, position it there so that we could go invest in some other kind of asset that could give us a higher rate of return because we want to buy more assets, right. right? If we did the HELOC for 50 grand, you can see our liabilities increase mm -hmm. by 50 grand. We now have 540,000, but our assets increased by 50,000, so now we have 725. So our net worth didn't move. Right. It's exactly the same. Right. We're just reloading, we're repositioning, mm -hmm. we're reallocating and aligning things to put in a, you in a position so that you can get out there and acquire more assets faster so you can increase your cash flow so then you can go buy more assets and so you can increase your cash flow so you can go buy more assets. Your liquid equity, okay, went up to 170. Now you've got some real money to go do something with. You could buy investment properties now, right? right? And leverage the investment property, okay, so that you can buy multiple investment properties. Mm -hmm. You could buy maybe two or three or four investment properties. As your money coach, I'm telling you, your largest wealth building tool is not your income. Okay, mm -hmm. It's your ability to get more assets because assets produce cash flow. So you're your number one most important asset. Invest in yourself first. Okay, mm -hmm. Mindset, skill set, tool set, because those will equal assets. It'll empower, equip, and enable you to go buy more assets. Right. What are some problems with focusing on eliminating your debt first? Because that's what Ramsey is talking about, mm -hmm. right? Get out of debt before you start saving money, um, except for your house. But get all the other debt gone. Mm -hmm. Well, if your focus, if your goal, if your objective is to get out of debt and you achieve that goal, you're still broke. You still got nothing. Mm -hmm. all, you, all you did was went from minus to zero. So, I mean, really? Getting to zero means you've lost valuable time for acquiring and mm -hmm. compounding more assets, mm -hmm. and you can't get that time back. Right. That's a really bad trade-off, right? Getting to zero leaves you with a huge liquidity risk because yeah. you've got no cash. Right. Remember... Profitable businesses go broke because they run out of money. Right. It's cash flow. It's liquidity. And it's going to be the same in your personal finances. You need liquidity. You need cash, money, or access to credit like this if something goes wrong. Right. You don't want debt equity in your home either because that's not working for you, especially if you got low interest opportunities mm -hmm. or high income opportunities on the asset. Another problem with focusing on your debt first is that you're not correctly considering your cost of money, okay? For you to think about paying off your home mortgage, mm. uh, if it's at 3%, is ridiculous, in my opinion. Right. Unless you're 70, okay, and you want to be able to sleep at night. If you're young, if you're in your accumulation years, right. this is the time to acquire assets. 
you don't want to take money and pay off a super low interest rate like that. Right. Keep your leverage and go buy more assets. Mm -hmm. Right. And as I mentioned earlier, the problem with eliminating your debt and specifically trying to pay your house off early now, because if you got super high interest rate debt, I mean, I don't have a problem with paying that off. Okay. But your home mortgage, really? If it's at 3%, um, inflation's over 3%. Like, don't, inflation is your friend if you're the borrower. So right. just let that thing ride and start pumping your money into acquiring assets. This, let's get to financial freedom sooner by focusing on acquiring assets so we can enjoy it longer, mm -hmm. right? Debt is a power tool. That means there's some risk. You just learn how to use the tool correctly, okay? Debt is leverage so you can acquire more assets faster. Using your cash to pay off debt doesn't improve your balance sheet. It does destroy your liquidity, and we don't want to do that, okay? Now, here's some bonus thoughts on uh, on the pastor, okay? Pastor Eric Howell. He wrote that article on uh, payday lending. And the case of Proverbs 22, verse 7, which is the verse that Dave Ramsey uses the second half of to right. justify his position on debt, okay? Mm -hmm. Great article. I highly recommend you read it. But um, this is super interesting. I believe that Pastor Howell argues convincingly that the better interpretation of that verse should be read as it being instruction being directed mm -hmm. to the rich. It's not a prohibition against debt. Right. Right. It's super interesting. I mean, it'll to change your perspective here dramatically, okay? But in the article, he said... Um, this is directed to the rich is grounded in three ways. First, he says the audience for the biblical witness about lending and usury, usury is charging high interest rates. Right. The biblical witness or the biblical evidence is almost always to the lender, not the borrower. Mm -hmm. Okay. The instruction is to the one in power, right? The instruction is to the lender. Right. Second, the context of that verse, Proverbs 22, the whole chapter, the context of the whole chapter is directed almost totally at the rich, right. not to the poor. Mm -hmm. And third, he says the nature of that verse, Proverbs 22, 7, is fully read as warning to the rich not to fall victim to the temptation to profit from the suffering of another person. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. What are your other options? Oh, charity. Charity. Right? You just give them the money to help them out or invest with them. Be a partner. Right. Don't lend them the money if they're poor and uh -huh. they got no means. Right. Because you're taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. Right? If a financial debt trap exists, Pastor Howell says, then a moral lending trap with spiritual implications mm. also exists. And just from my perspective, mm. uh, reading that and, and going back to that verse and everything, uh, I don't believe that many people in America would qualify as poor today. Right. We are educated, right? If you're healthy and able-bodied, okay? I mean, if you're healthy and able-bodied, uh, of sound mind, okay, you are not the poor that this is referencing because you are educated and you can get retrained. You've got some strength and muscles. You have the ability to work. You have means, okay, to produce an income for yourself and work, you are not the poor. Right. Uh-uh. So, um, this has been really a f just so interesting and intriguing to me um, to help me be able to find some answers, to find uh, a trade-off to what has been crammed down my throat because it's not been sitting well. Yeah. Right? This is my trade-off. And that right. is what it has not been. That is has been the problem. That yeah. it has not been sitting well, and you needed to figure out why. It's not Dave Ramsey's way, or you're wrong, or you're an idiot. Okay, he doesn't have a corner. He doesn't corner the market on financial intelligence or uh, biblical interpretation. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's his passionately held belief, and it does work. But. Like we talked about, if you're planning a trip from California, from L.A. to New York, uh, how do you want to get there? Right. You could walk. That will work. Mm -hmm. You could ride your bike. That mm -hmm. will work. 
but why would you do that if you could jump on a plane and be there in three hours or five hours? Mm -hmm. the, the fact of it working or not is not the issue. That's not relevant. The thing is, what's best for you? Exactly. Thank you for clarifying that. Right. Yeah. That's good. Three-sided coin, folks. Heads, tails, and the edge. The edge. Mm -hmm. Get the edge, get the truth, get wisdom and understanding right. to make the best financial decisions for yourself and your family. Very good. Awesome. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you so much. Please uh, drop some comments. We'd love to get your feedback and uh, maybe suggestions on follow-up or some other videos that we can help you uh, with your personal financial questions and concerns. Yeah, sounds good. All right. See you on the next video.